which is the Bert Sugar Historian Award to a really great guy who I've known for quite a few years and he's been around the boxing world for a long time and he's a huge and huge big supporter of Ring 10. The best, the Bert Sugar Historian Award is given to an individual who carries a proficient knowledge of the history of boxing and who preserves its memories. This fellow, John Scully, he began boxing in 1982, and while in high school, he won numerous championships at middleweight, including the Ohio State Fair, National PAL, the Eastern U.S. Olympic Trials Tournament, where he won outstanding boxer award. He won four straight Western Massachusetts Golden Gloves titles and three consecutive New England Golden Glove titles. He advanced to the championship round of the National Golden Gloves Tournament on two occasions, losing two close split decisions. He ended his amateur career with a record of 57 wins. Guys, you'll be disrespectful, please. I think I'm going to have to get Commissioner O'Neill to slap some bracelets on a couple of people and escort them out the front door. Okay, thank you very much. He turned pro in 1988. In 1995, he fought two-time world champion Michael Nunn for the WBO Super Middleweight title, losing the decision. In 1996, in Germany, he fought unbeaten champion Henry Maskey for the IBF Light Heavyweight World Champion, losing a 12-round decision. He frequently served as a sparring partner for some of the biggest names in the sport, including world champions Henry Maskey, Mike McCallum, the body snatcher, Vinny Paz, Roy Jones Jr., and Jay Lights Out Tony. In 2001, he finished his pro career with an impressive record of 38 wins, 11 losses, with 21 coming by knockout. In 2009, John was inducted into the Connecticut Boxing Hall of Fame. Since 2001, he has been a successful professional boxing trainer, guiding four people to world titles. Liz Mueller, Jose Antonio Rivera, Mike Oliver, and Bad Chad Dawson. He guided Bad Chad Dawson to the biggest win of his career in 2012 when he captured a 12-round decision to take the WBC title from the legendary Bernard the Executioner of Alpes. I'm getting a lot of feedback from that side, so it's either the microphone or people are being disrespectful. Please, keep it down because I can't hear them from up here. Thank you. He has written a highly praised boxing book entitled The Iceman Diaries that details his life within the sport. He appeared often on ESPN Classic working alongside Joe Tessasori as a ringtime analyst for the network's ESPN Classic boxing series. He has written numerous boxing articles, is a frequent columnist for Britain's Boxing News magazine, and has been featured several times on ESPN News before and after major fights, reviewing and analyzing the action. It's with great pleasure and honors, an honor that I present the Burt Sugar Historian Award, Great Cans Award 2018, to John Iceman Scully! Jerry Cooney and Larry Holmes will sign for me today. You'll all be watching. 
So uh, we're going to do that, right? Okay, so we're good. So that's just, I've already got most of these guys here, so I want these two guys. Um, I just want to give a quick shout out. Uh, two boxers that I work with, two young kids, which is what it's all about, amateurs. Uh, OJ and Demond, and they're in the back. They both fought last night and they won. And then they came here to see this, which I didn't know they were coming. I'm, uh, I'm a boxing fan. And I'll tell you, like, everybody's here and they're excited to see Jerry and they're excited to see Sugar Ray. Um, but me, I see Diane Holmes. And I say, wow, there's Diane Holmes. This is crazy. So I want to take a picture with you after. When I was young, I, I read Muhammad Ali's autobiography when I was 11 years old, The Greatest. And uh, that shaped my life in many ways. Um, a lot of people here know me. Uh, in the book, I read that Muhammad Ali didn't, didn't drink alcohol and he didn't do drugs. And I'm 51 years old, and to this day, I've never tasted alcohol in my life. I've never tasted a beer. I've never done a drug. It's all because of Muhammad Ali in that book. Another thing in that book, um, he was, he was brash, and he was, he was funny, and I remember when I was a kid, there was this girl in my, in my class, and I, uh, I was about 15 years old, and I used to talk to her on the phone at night, and, and I told her when I was 15 years old, I said, one day we're going to get married, and we're going to have a baby, and, uh, you know, of course, I, I went on with my career, and, and she went on and had her life, we separated, so, uh, but as luck would have it, 21 years later, we reconnected, we had a baby, and they're, they're sitting right here. Yeah. So, yeah. That's another thing that I'm going to have to give you the, the choice to do. Now, one more thing, as a historian, I might be one of the few people, maybe the only one really, other than them two, that's going to be excited about this. Um, when I was coming up as an amateur, I idolized Mark. You know, I idolized all these guys. Biggs and, and you name it. And in my weight class, I started out at 156. And the two best guys were Frank Tate and uh, Dennis Filthy. They were, they were the guys. Like, we knew one of them was going to make the Olympic team. And uh, so I always looked up to them. I just found out, I don't think they've seen each other today. Uh, they haven't seen each other since they fought. Now, Dennis is sitting right there, and Frank is sitting right there. Uh, I'm hoping somebody has the wherewithal to get a, get a picture with these two guys. Back in the 80s here, I had a team with Mark and Tyro Vick. It was going to be one of these two. And everybody knew that. Okay, let's go. Rematch. Rematch. <laughs> so, yeah. Right, right. This is amateur. Amateur. But, um, so anyway, listen, uh, uh, Ring 10, it's, un it's unbelievable what they do. I don't know if you truly realize what they do. Uh, because you don't see it up, up close. You read about it, you hear about it, they tell you about it. I went to visit one of my idols, Wolfred Benitez, last summer at his home in Puerto Rico. It was not a necessarily pleasant experience. I walked in the house, now they're, they're helping Wolfred. They help him quite a bit. Uh, you can hear that a fighter's not doing well, and you just get an image in it. Yeah. I went to see Wolfred Benitez, I walked in the house, he was laying in a hospital bed right inside the front door. His, his sister, just like Gerald's sister, their whole life literally revolves around taking care of this person. Both of them, if, if they left him alone for a week, he would die. He cannot get out of bed to feed himself. I don't know if he knows how to get to the refrigerator. Um, so these are people, when they say in need, these people are in need. They, Wolfred's sister gave up her life, just like Lisa did, to take care of this person. Now that's, that's something, I don't know how many of us could do that. Uh, you know, that's an unbelievably special. So I want to give a, a shout out to Lisa, to Wolfred's sister, and to Matt, because I know you know this is important, but this is important. This is unbelievably important. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for being here because I know for sure all your uh, contributions go where it's supposed to go. Thank you.
It's coming. It's coming.